Hi, this clip is a teaser about PostGIS training and refractions research. Refractions is a geospatial consultancy and software development house. We also work with Enterprise DB on training pertaining to PostGIS and PostgreSQL. My name is Mark Sondheim. Kevin Newfeld and Chris Hodgson will be joining me later. They are two of the software developers at Refractions who also happen to be PostGIS experts and instructors. Chris will briefly review some introductory material using slides. Kevin will then take over with a live examination of a truly interesting real-world problem. You'll see how effective PostGIS and PostgreSQL can be in meeting your database requirements. Hi, I'm Chris Hodgson and I'm a software developer with Refractions. I've worked on the development of PostGIS and I've also been involved in the creation of training material and with teaching people how to use PostGIS to solve their problems. So, let's take a look at just what is PostGIS. It starts with a relational database management system. Some commercial examples of this would include Oracle, Informix, SQL Server, and DB2. But PostGIS is based on the open source PostgreSQL database. All of these systems have the same basic functions in common. They allow you to store, update, and manage your data. Generally, that data is stored in tables in the form of numbers, dates, or text strings. What PostGIS adds to your database is the ability to store points, lines, and areas in the database just as you would store a number or a date. These geometric objects might represent the location of geographic features such as rivers or roads, or they might represent more abstract concepts such as administrative boundaries or climate zones and they can be referenced to either a flat map or a spherical globe. PostGIS is an enterprise-ready spatial data solution. It supports hundreds of operations, functions, and comparisons. The spatial objects and operators conform to both ISO standards and those of the Open Geospatial Consortium. PostGIS provides a spatial index to enable quick access to those spatial objects, the points, lines, and areas. This is a high-performance system. PostGIS and PostgreSQL can readily serve as the foundation for many different system architectures. So let's look at how it fits into the spatial architecture stack. PostGIS can be used as a land-based storage system for any of the desktop GIS applications, including open source offerings such as UDIG, GRASS, QGIS, and OpenJump, as well as ESRI's ArcGIS. PostGIS also fits into an internet-based architecture utilizing OGC's web map server and web feature server standards. Two open source packages, map server and GeoServer, both provide OGC compliant interfaces to access data stored in a PostGIS database. This can in turn be accessed through a slick web interface such as MapGuide, OpenIMF, or a custom web client developed with open layers or other tools. UDIG and other internet-focused desktop tools can also access PostGIS over the internet through the WMS and WFS interfaces. So we listed those other proprietary database systems before and they have spatial extensions which provide similar functionality to PostGIS. However, comparing price to functionality ratio, you can see that you really have to pay for what you get. And while there are some open source options where this remains true, with PostGIS and PostgreSQL, you get an enterprise-level spatial database system with zero licensing cost. Once you've chosen PostGIS as your spatial database, let's consider why you should train for PostGIS with Refractions Research. Refractions is the company that created PostGIS. We developed it from the ground up. Our trainers are also our software developers, and so we have real-world experience with the development of custom solutions built around PostGIS. Refractions also works closely with Enterprise DB for spatial system support. Refractions has broad training experience, having trained researchers at both Los Alamos and Oak Ridge National Laboratories, the Government of Canada, and various private companies. Now we're going to take a look at a real-world example. Kamloops is a town of about 95,000 people. It's situated at the intersection of two major rivers in south-central British Columbia. Kamloops has much to offer as a place to live, but from time to time it does experience flooding. As background to Kevin's live demo, let's first consider how flooding is assessed. The top diagram shows a river in its normal state, contained within its banks. 
When flooding occurs, its extent is measured, and over a period of years, we can create a statistical picture. The middle diagram shows the maximum extent of flooding on average that can be expected during any arbitrary 20-year period. The bottom diagram shows the same thing, but with an extreme flood based on a 200-year period. With the real data that Kevin will show, you will see that the 200-year event is more extensive than the 20-year event, as shown here and as you would expect. Hi, my name is Kevin Neufeld. I'm a software developer, GIS analyst here at Refractions. I'm going to walk you through a few scenarios that will showcase PostGIS in action. We'll use a few of the many PostGIS functions available to perform some spatial analysis directly in the database. We'll see some routing using a custom road data set, and we'll see how easy it is to modify or edit spatial data sourced by the database. For the last six years, the municipality of Kamloops has made publicly available a wide variety of data sets, everything ranging from administrative to cadastral to hydrographic to planimetric and others. I've already loaded a few of these data sets into PostGIS. We can view the spatial data on any number of desktop clients, like GVSIG, User-Friendly Desktop Internet GIS, or UDIG for short, the Java Unified Mapping Platform, or quantum GIS. In all of these cases though, you'll need to specify some typical connection parameters with which to connect to the database, like a host name, a port, a database name, and user credentials. As you can see here, I've already loaded in neighborhood polygons, water bodies, streets, address points, as well as the 20-year and 200-year floodplains. All right. So now if I turn on the 20-year flood areas, we see all of the homes that are affected uh, in the 20-year uh, prediction of flooding. And just likewise, the 200-year, we can see all these homes that are affected all throughout this lower area down here. So now the question comes, how, how do we answer how much of this area in North Shore is affected by flooding? How many homes are affected in, in North Shore by this flooding area? Well, we can answer this by executing spatial queries against the PostGIS database. I'm just going to bring up a shell connection to the PostGIS database that we have the Kenloops data loaded into. I'm just going to connect. You'll see that this is, in fact, a PostGIS database with the data that I've loaded in. Let's consider some analytical questions one might ask in a situation like this. One possible question might be, what percentage of North Shore is on the 20-year floodplain? Here's one possible way to express the, se the question in SQL. What I'm doing here is querying the neighborhood polygonal layer where the name is North Shore and the floodplain, the 20-year floodplain, where the two intersect. I'm taking the area of the intersection of North Shore and the 20-year floodplain divided by the area of North Shore. And we see that we have a percentage of 34%. What about the 200-year floodplain? What percentage of North Shore is affected here? The question can be very similar. In this case, we're querying the 200-year floodplain against the neighborhood polygon of North Shore. We're taking the intersection area of the two divided by the area, the total area of North Shore. And now we see we yield a result of 51%. Well, how many address locations are there in North Shore? In this case, our address point data set does not have a neighborhood attribute. So we would need to answer this question spatially. Here we are again looking at the North Shore polygon. This time we're joining against the address point data set where the North Shore contains our addresses. And we see that in the entire North Shore polygonal polygon, we have 3,400 homes. So how many of these 3,400 homes could be affected in the event of a flood occurring within the next 20 years? To keep things simple, I'm going to tackle this question in two phases. First, I'm going to determine the polygonal area that represents the 20-year flooding in North Shore. Then, I'm going to determine just how many homes are contained within this area. So here's some SQL. Just like we saw earlier when we were computing percentages, this represents the 20-year flooding in North Shore. 
We're taking the North Shore Polygon, intersecting that with a 20-year floodplain, and we're, get, and we're getting the intersection of the two. I'm creating a temporary table. Now I'm going to use that table and determine just how many addresses are contained within the 20-year floodplain. And we see we have an answer of 862 homes affected. What about the 200-year floodplain? According to the hydrologists, if flooding were to occur in 200 years, how many of the 3,400 homes could be affected? Well, just like before, we created a temporary table. Let's split this up into two phases. Let's create a temporary table of the polygonal area that represents the 200-year floodplain against the North Shore. Now let's use this temporary table, this polygonal area that represents 200 years, to determine just how many address points are located within that area we see we have 1,500 homes affected within this disaster zone. So you can see with relative ease we were able to answer a few analytical questions in PostGIS. Here are some hard numbers. Here's another example of using PostGIS. This time we're going to make use of a third party product, PG Routing. Like PostGIS, PG Routing is also open source. Actually, it's currently in the process of being merged into the PostGIS core. You'll probably hear more on this with the release of version 2.0. What we're currently looking at is a simple interface that uses the Google Maps API with a WMS overlay layer pulled directly from our freely available Kamloops Road dataset in PostGIS. PG Routing requires some pre-processing to build up a network topology using your linear dataset. You can apply custom weights or cost to each edge or specify directionality if that should be taken into account. Once pre-processing is done, you can query the network using algorithms like shortest path distra, shortest path A star, shortest path shooting star. For example, all I have to do is specify a start and end location and a behind the scenes PHP script will turn that into an appropriate SQL query. We're really only limited on our use of PG routing by our imagination. We can use it to route streets, as seen here, or a hydrographic network, a river network, or a hiking or biking trails, it's up to you. Another thing I want to show you is how we can use almost any GIS desktop client that can connect to PostGIS like QGIS, UDIG, Jump to edit or modify the PostGIS database directly. Here I'm just taking a few of these vertices along this, this road here and modifying them. Now we'll commit our changes go back to our routing example and see the new route take shape. There we go. I can also increase the weight currently assigned to an edge so that the shortest path route will choose a different path. Here's identify tool and the edit form. I'm just going to modify the length attribute that is the cost associated with this particular edge. Hit OK and commit this back to the database. Going back to our, our route, we can see now that the, a generated route will now use a different path because the cost associated with this path is less. We can tailor the weights assigned to each edge so that the routing algorithm will favor highways over back alleys, or dirt roads for that matter. Let me give you a very brief overview of what to expect with a two-day training course. I should first mention that it can be tailored to meet your specific needs. As well, it can be longer than two days if required. It can also be combined with other courses that we teach and other open source developments. With a typical course, the first is spent on an introduction of spatial concepts, on installation, and on using PostGIS. The second day is used to cover exporting data, reviewing and editing spatial features, and database administration. We complete the course with more detail on using PostGIS with other frequently used components. Thanks very much for watching. We hope the video piqued your interest in PostGIS. If you'd like to contact us, here is how to do so. Bye for now.